Hey everyone, Holly Grant here with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's Coastal Fisheries Division. We're going to be spending a little bit of time today talking about shark anatomy. Basically what that means is we're going to be taking a look at different parts of the shark's body and looking at some of the really cool adaptations that they have. We're going to be focusing mostly on some of the shark's external structures or things that are on the outside of the fish's body, but there are also a few cool internal structures that I want to show you as well or things that are on the inside of the shark's body. So let's start looking at those external structures. So this is the shark we're going to be looking at here today. He's an Atlantic sharp-nosed shark, and Atlantic sharp-nosed sharks are fairly common along the coast of Texas. I don't know a ton about where exactly this shark came from, but if I had to take a guess, I'd say probably somewhere off the coast of Corpus Christi in the Gulf of Mexico. Atlantic sharp-nosed sharks are named that because they have a very pointy snout. They also have a white splotchy pattern along their sides, and they get to be about two and a half feet in length, which is just about how big this one is here. Sharks are a type of fish, so as we go through some of these structures, you'll notice that they are very similar to other fish that you may be familiar with. Things like red drum, bass, or maybe even something like your pet goldfish. Let's start by talking about their fins. So the fin that you guys might be most familiar with are their dorsal fins, and these are the fins at the top of the shark's body. They actually have two. These fins are known for sticking up out of the water as sharks are swimming near the surface. These fins help to keep the shark upright in the water. As we move towards the bottom of the shark and towards the shark's mouth, we'll see here they have a set of pectoral fins. These pectoral fins are helpful in steering the shark. And then as we move towards the shark's tail, we'll see they have a set of pelvic fins and anal fins. And then at the very end, something that you guys might be very familiar with is that shark tail. And this shark tail is going to be incredibly important in helping these guys pick up speed and propel through the water. So let's start talking about its mouth now. So this shark is a little bit frozen, so I'm not able to actually open its mouth to show you its teeth, but I do have a set of shark jaws that I want to show you. So this is a shark jaw from a different type of shark. As we're taking a closer look at some of its teeth, I want you guys to notice how many rows of teeth that these sharks can have. They lose their teeth all the time, but when that happens, it's not a big deal because they have so many of these teeth waiting right behind them to grow into place. And they move into place almost like they're on a conveyor belt. So while we're near the head of the shark, I wanna take a look at their nostrils. So let's flip this guy over. So shark's nostrils are kind of like a pouch. Water will come in and out of the pouch. Sharks use their nostrils only for smelling. They do not use their nostrils for breathing like we do. There are structures within the nostrils that are sensitive to chemicals in the water that can help the sharks find their food. You may also be noticing a lot of little black dots or pores near his nose and his mouth. These are the ampullae of Lorenzini. So these receptors detect electrical signals. As a fish moves, their muscles produce an electric current, so they can be swimming, breathing, or doing any other kind of movement, even if they're buried in the sand, and the shark will be able to detect their movement with those receptors. The ampullae of Lorenzini help make the shark really successful predators. So let's talk about their gills. Bony fish and sharks both have gills to help them breathe underwater, but bony fish have an operculum that covers their gills, where sharks have gill slits. As the shark moves through the water, water will enter its mouth and come into contact with blood vessels in the gills. That oxygen gets transported into the shark's body and helps it to breathe underwater. So let's talk shark scales. Shark scales are called dermal denticles and they point backwards towards the shark's tail. So as I move my hand this way across the shark towards his tail, it's really easy and I'm not met with any resistance at all. However, if I were to go in the opposite direction from his tail towards his head, my fingers would get stuck on those dermal denticles and he actually feels a lot like sandpaper. So I've talked about all of our external structures and it's time to talk about some of these internal structures. I wanna start off first with the shark skeleton. Shark skeletons are made out of cartilage, just like our noses and our ears. So I want you guys to take a second right now to feel your nose or feel your ears and see how flexible they are. Sharks don't have swim bladders, so they have other adaptations that allow them to stay buoyant in the water. This includes their cartilaginous bones. Cartilage is a lot lighter than calcium bones would be, so this helps them to stay buoyant in the water. Let's take a closer look at some of these shark vertebrae. So this is not something that you'd see very often. This is part of the shark's vertebrae or part of their backbone. If you guys can take a second to touch your spine for me. 
that's exactly what this is on a shark. Typically you don't see this very often because they're made out of cartilage, which decomposes pretty quickly, but someone was able to take the shark's spine and preserve it for me so that I could use to show people what a shark vertebrae looks like. So I wanna show you guys now another adaptation that sharks have to help keep them buoyant in the water. But to do this, I'm going to show you a dissected shark. If that's not something you're interested in seeing, please go ahead and shut the video off now. So you'll see that this large organ here is the shark's liver. They have a three lobed liver and it is very oily and that oil helps to keep the sharks buoyant in water. The liver helps the shark with digestion and acts as a filter as well. You may notice some bright green on the liver. That's the shark's gallbladder. The gallbladder produces bile that aids in digestion. So thank you guys for joining me here today. I hope you learned a little bit about sharks and I hope we'll see you again soon. Bye.